Welcome back to In Business. We are seeing the price of crude oil trade at about $77 today, uh, more than 2% decline. Crude inventories um, we are waiting for to see with the release tomorrow. Today we're seeing dollar strength. We're also seeing uh, some speculation that China may be tightening up its uh, lending there, and that's leading to pressure on the price of crude. Do you think we'll ever see $147? A barrel again? Well, our next guest does. He's one of the top deal makers in the oil and gas space. It's Thomas Petrie, Vice Chairman at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. He's joining us now from Denver this morning. $147 a barrel. When will we see that again? Well, it'll be quite a while, I think, Margaret. Uh, I, I'm thinking out the middle of this decade. Uh, we have to get through a lot of the economic uncertainty that we're dealing with now. And we have to see whether that question, uh, that point you just made about China uh, holds up. Uh, will China successfully rein in its rate of economic growth mm -hmm. such that, uh, uh, that we don't get quite the pressing demand? That, uh, all that said, however, we've got a maturing of the existing producing base that uh, makes, I think, a mid $150 oil price likely in the course of the coming decade and probably around the middle of this decade. Does it make you more or less optimistic to see the Chinese government taking uh, the actions that it is to, to cool their, their economy as it heats up? Some could say they're trying to pop bubbles before they burst. Some can say they're constraining economic growth. Bottom line, what do you think it means for oil? Well, I think it is probably good because uh, unconstrained growth uh, can, con as we've lived through very recently in our own experience, can result in a very uh, ugly ending. Uh, so to the degree they're, they're able to be preemptive uh, in, in containing the rate of growth and, and perhaps foreclosing some of, the, uh, some of the bubble aspects that are being concerned, uh, talked about as a concern uh, in some quarters, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a good thing, I think, overall. Uh, in this country today, we're seeing oil at $77 a barrel there. How much of a premium do you think geopolitical risk is in terms of that price right now? I, I think there's at least $10 or $15 a barrel uh, that is, is probably geopolitically uh, oriented. There's a lot of uncertainty in the Middle East today with what's happening in Yemen, what's happening in Afghanistan, uh, even some continuing challenges and questions in Iraq. Uh, so there has to be a premium uh, because of all of those factors, and obviously Iran is, is still an uncertainty mm -hmm. with respect to its nuclear program. I was reading through your pre-interview notes here, and we've been talking so much about the buildup in M&A and the expected uh, growth in that in this new year. But you don't necessarily see that happening in your oil and gas space. Why is that? Well, uh, one, it's been a fairly active uh, area of, uh, for much of the last decade. So a lot of the logical uh, mergers occurred in the early to middle part of the last decade. Um, there aren't that many additional combinations that make good business sense. Uh, I, do, I would not rule out uh, other transactions occurring, but I think the main, the sweet spot for activity today is in the property end of the business involving either joint ventures between larger companies and independents uh, in the unconventional gas development and to a degree unconventional oil development uh, and uh, just outright property sales. We've been active in that area. We expect we'll continue to be uh, where we're seeing the rationalization of ownership, of mm -hmm. especially oil-oriented properties. And uh, again, in the future, I think, with uh, Boone Pickens prediction about some recovery in natural gas, I expect that area will pick up. Do you, do you see more activity then in natural gas specific spaces or what are you talking about when you say uh, uh, properties? Uh, these, are, these are leases uh, that are gas perspective to be developed either with new capital going in or that, that have been developed and where the companies that have developed them have decided to monetize the asset and move on to another project where they can uh, again go through that development stage. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of activity in that area and that's, a, that's, that's one of the most productive and, and value adding 
uh, areas of activity in the industry today. There's such a glut, though, of natural gas supply. When you look at the noise coming out of Washington and the potential for clean energy legislation there, uh, on the regulatory front, what do you foresee happening and how is that changing your outlook for natural gas? Well, you're quite right that there's a, that there's a, right now a surplus of gas availability. Uh, but one person's glut is another person's assured future supply. Mm -hmm. We need a certain cushion over and above in order to have reliable supply and reasonable prices. So uh, it's not all a bad thing that, that the industry has put capital to work and developed this. We have an especially challenging time now because we also have internationally developing uh, good availability of liquefied natural gas, some of which can come into the U.S. because we now have the infrastructure to deliver it here. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a plus. I think it is going to enhance the ability uh, to lower uh, CO2 emissions as utilities and other burners of, uh, of fossil fuels switch more to gas uh, in their mix. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas Petrie, Vice Chairman, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, for joining us. Interesting call there saying M&A not necessarily going to heat up in the oil and gas space, but do keep your eye on natural gas.